Hi guys, welcome to Jay Today. Please subscribe if you're not already. So today we're talking about the case of Grace Mullane. Grace was born on December the 2nd, 1996 to parents David and Gillian. She was from the small town of Wickford, which is in Essex in the UK, and she'd been planning to travel for a full year. She had just been to Peru with a group of friends and then ended up in Auckland in New Zealand on her own. And uh, the evening before her 22nd birthday, she decided to go out on a Tinder date after matching with somebody. So it was the 1st of December 2018. She left the base backpackers hostel at 5.37 that evening and headed on her way to meet with the, her date for the first time. Jesse Kempson was in the Bluestone room drinking before the date and then he went to meet up with Grace. They met at Sky City in Auckland, where you can see Jesse hugs Grace when he first meets her. Then they uh, proceed to walk around the uh, the shopping centre before going for a drink in a uh, local bar. Fortunately, most of this night was caught on the CCTV camera, and all the, most of the cameras were very good quality. So the whole night was uh, tracked by CCTV, which helped the police catch. Um, how Grace went missing and what had happened to her that night. So they proceed to go into this bar together and they have one drink in this bar before they decide to move on to the next place. They left the bar together at 7.12 before making their way round the corner to a Mexican restaurant where they arrived at 7.16. They proceed to have a meal in here and they stay till around 8.24 when uh, Jessie can be seen coming up to the counter with Grace following him. Uh, she then goes off to the toilet at some point and then comes back to the counter. Uh, they leave the Mexican restaurant at 8.26. You can see Grace talking with, with the girl behind the counter there and they all look very relaxed and they're, like they're having a good night. When Jessie was first arrested, his identity was kept secret until after the trial due to New Zealand laws. Uh, allowing people to have a fair trial so their identities are kept secret until they're found guilty or innocent. After the Mexican restaurant, they went to the Blue Stone Room where Jesse had been drinking before he met Grace. Um, they stayed in there for quite a while and at 8.54 they shared their first kiss together. You can see that they look very close during this time. At around 8.56, Jesse excuses himself and goes to the uh, bathroom where Grace gets on her phone to her friend and texts her friend in the UK telling him about the Tinder date and how she's really clicked with this uh, guy that she's met up with. Unfortunately, Grace didn't realise that she was on a date with a psychopath and only eight months before this, he'd been on another Tinder date where the woman had accused him of rape. And when she saw this case on television, she immediately recognised who he was, even though his face was blurred out. And she went to the police with her allegations and he was charged with that rape too. They left the Bluestone Room Club at around 9.40 and made their way back to Jesse's Hotel, which is the City Life in Auckland, where they arrived hand, arm in arm. Um, they walked together towards the lift area. Grace walked into the lift first, followed by Jesse and they went, proceeded to go up to his room. Unfortunately, this is the last uh, footage of Grace seen alive. What actually happened in the hotel room, uh, Jesse will only know the full truth of the extent of what actually happened in the hotel room. Unfortunately, Grace didn't make it to her 22nd birthday, which would have been in just over two hours from this point now. The next morning at 8 o'clock, Jesse can be seen getting into the lift on his own. He looks up at the camera. He doesn't look too nervous or too um, panicked by anything at the moment. He, he knows there's a dead body in his hotel room. And he heads out to um, the atrium on a Elliot. He arrives there about 8.07. He proceeds to casually walk to the warehouse on Elliot Street. You can be seen entering the shop 
and having a look around where he then heads over to the uh, suitcases and you can see him picking out a large suitcase before he eventually brings it over to the checkout. pays the cashier for the suitcase and then he can be seen afterwards going back towards the hotel He arrives back at the hotel at around 8.14 with the suitcase and proceeds to bring it up to his room. Obviously this doesn't look suspicious, it's a hotel, everyone's got suitcases. No one would have even battered an eyelid seeing him walk around with this. Not knowing the horrors that had gone on in the room. He brings the suitcase up to his hotel room. He enters his hotel room at about 8.15 and then he exits again. He comes back out of the hotel room and goes back down in the lift at around 8.32. Um, he was apparently taking pictures of Grace's body as well. Pictures were found on his phone by the police afterwards. At what point that happened, I'm not too sure. He goes back to um, he goes to a shot store called Countdown Metro at eight thirty five, and he can be seen buying cleaning products, uh, rubber gloves, and other cleaning products. And then he goes back towards the hotel, and he gets back there around eight forty and brings all the cleaning products up to the hotel room. He then comes back out of the hotel room around 10.25, so over an hour and a half later, where he's now, now seen getting into a taxi, Saranda Kumar's taxi at 10.33. Uh, this is one of the only times you'll actually see him looking a bit panicked and a bit stressed while he's in this taxi. The rest of the time he just looks completely calm and relaxed about everything. Anyway, he takes the taxi to Apex Car Rental, where he arrives at around 10.42, where he rents a car. He then arrives back at the City Life Hotel at around 11.02 and goes up in the lift with a woman and spends over three hours in the room. Uh, he exits at 2.53pm and you can see that he's changed his clothes. He's got a different coloured trousers on and he's texting on his phone at, the, at this point. He was actually going out on another Tinder date at this point with a woman that he'd been chatting with for two weeks while Grace's body was still in, his, in the hotel room. Uh, he met her at Revelry Bar in Auckland, but the woman said uh, she felt uneasy around him and uh, he kept saying all his friends were police officers. Their cars were parked down the same road, but she felt so uneasy she told him that her car was a different way and she left him. Uh, obviously that was a good thing. He went back to the City Life Hotel at this point at 5.41 and then he exits again at 7.12 where he can be seen going to the Countdown Key Street car park and that's the red car that he had hired from the car rental place. Uh, he parks that there and then makes his way back to the hotel again. He then goes back to the hotel again for a little while before going back out back out to the shop to count down on Key Street again where he can be seen hiring a carpet cleaner which he then brings back to the hotel. He brings the carpet cleaner and the two bottles of sham carpet shampoo up to his hotel room and then a short while after he brings the carpet cleaner back down in the lift Obviously, he's used the two bottles of shampoo on the carpets, trying to clean them, clean DNA, clean blood, clean blood, clean um, bodily fluids, whatever was on the carpet, trying to clean up the crime scene. 
then at 9 40 p.m he's seen putting the suitcase that he bought earlier and one of the ones that he originally had with him this is uh, believed to be grace's body in the bottom suitcase this is the 2nd of december this would have been grace's 22nd birthday today and he brings the two suitcases down in the lift and takes them through the lobby and out of the front door to where he's brought the car around to the front of the hotel, the red uh, Apex rental car. And he can be seen putting the two suitcases into the car boot. He then returns the trolley into the City Life Hotel. At 6.50 the next day, the 3rd of December, the red rental car is seen going into a local hardware shop car park. He goes into the hardware shop where he has a look around and he eventually buys a spade from the shopkeeper there. It's around two hours later that he returns to the parking garage in Wilson uh, near the hotel um, just before half past nine when he brings the car back and then he's seen going into the hotel, the City Life Hotel. So he's been missing for about around two hours when the police think he was uh, disposing of Grace's body at this point. He also looks to be wearing a completely different outfit to the one that he went out in uh, with, when he left with the suitcases. He then proceeds to go back up to his hotel room. And then at 9.52 a.m. on the 3rd of December, he returns to the lift wearing yet another different outfit and carrying a large black bag I'm actually unsure what's in the black bag at this point. I and mean, he does now go to the dry cleaners. This is now 9.58, but he only appears to have the one smaller bag with him that he left the hotel with. So whatever was in the, <clears throat> the other black bag, I'm not too sure of. Anyway, he goes to the dry cleaners and asks for things to be dry cleaned. Next, he goes to a car wash where he cleans the car, obviously to try to get rid of any DNA evidence. He returns to the hotel a short while later with both the suitcases which now appear to be empty and he brings them back up to his hotel room. Then at 11.27 on the 3rd of December he's seen going back out of City Life uh, Hotel wearing yet another different outfit. And he returns again to the same dry cleaners with a different bag this time uh, with obviously some different clothes and probably the ones that he had on uh, earlier to get them dry cleaned. Then a few days later on the 5th of December at 4.50 he's seen in Albert Park where he goes up to a rubbish bin and proceeds to put something into the rubbish bin. And then he returns to the hotel with the same bag that he was carrying in the park. Around noon on the 5th of December, police have been alerted to uh, Grace Mullane being missing. And they come to the hotel because that's a last known whereabouts to question um, Jesse or look for him and f look for CCTV. Jesse can now be seen walking up to the hotel on this day where he has a look round and he looks in through the window where he spots the police officers and he promptly makes a U-turn and tries to casually walk away from the hotel. Unfortunately for him though, he has been spotted. He tries to look nonchalant walking back down the road. You can see the manager in the wind there looking out 
He's obviously spotted him and he's alerting the police inside to where Jesse is. He's all the way down the street now and the police have spotted him and they go chasing after him and this is when he's uh, apprehended. Jesse Shane Kempson, aged 26 at the time, was charged with Grace's murder on the 8th of December. Despite his efforts to clean up the hotel room with the carpet shampoo and the cleaning products, under the UV light the police could clearly see blood stains and bodily fluid stains. Grace's body was found the day after on the 9th of December at around 4pm on Scenic Drive in the Wachakee Ranges. The police appealed for information to try find the spade that was missing at that point and for information on the rental car. Sense of hurt and shame that this has happened in our country, a place that prides itself on our hospitality, on our manakitanga, um, especially to those who are visiting our shores. And so on behalf of New Zealand, I want to apologise to Grace's family. Kempson pleaded not guilty to the um, murder of Grace and claimed it was a consensual bondage sex act where she had insisted that he strangle her and that's how she died. Her father was in court. Unfortunately, her mother couldn't come over from the UK for the first hearing and he had to listen to all the bad things that this man said about Grace rather than just acknowledge his own guilt. The court heard from three of the witnesses that had met um, Kempson through Tinder and they all said that he had a very strange fetish for bondage and sadomasochism and very rough sex. While he blamed Millane for this, uh, they insisted that it was all his idea. The court also saw several Google searches from Jesse's phone searching how to hide a body or dispose of a body. The post-mortem of Melaine's body indicated that she had died from a result of being restrained and asphyxiated. He was found guilty on the 21st of February 2020 after five hours of deliberation and sentenced to life with a minimum non-parole of 17 years. He went on to appeal his sentence uh, during which time uh, Grace's father had passed away. His uh, appeal was dismissed and he said that he will appeal again to the Supreme Court. After the murder trial, there was uh, two other cases of rape against him. One of an ex-girlfriend who he treated really badly. He imprisoned her, told her that the CIA had sent him to kill her and things like that. And also the other girl from the another Tinder date who he brought up to the hotel room and raped after she refused to sleep with him. Uh, on a... And being found guilty on both of them, he said that this to the judge, you have no reason to convict me, you're full of S, mate, Rage Kempson to the judge. So he basically had no remorse for anything and still always feels like he's in the right. It uh, doesn't look like he'll ever be released from prison. Uh, Grace's family have set up a foundation for her called Love Grace under slash UK. Uh, they fill bags with toiletries for women in women's refuges and things like that. It's done in Grace's name. If you want to check that out, it's a lovely page. Grace is set, said to be a lovely person, full of life, always happy and bubbly. She had planned to go travelling for a year. She was only planning on staying in Auckland for two weeks. Unfortunately, her life was cut short, short by this um, psychopath man. Uh, rest in peace, Grace. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.